From Nashville's WSM Radio, the original home of the Grand Ole Opry, this is a Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. Hey, it's Charlie Matos, and in this episode of our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast, always a pleasure to have songwriter Hall of Famer Steve Dorff in studio. Steve is involved in a new movie called Dead Man's Hand. He would write the musical score to the movie and three original songs as well, including the title track sung by Lewis Bryce. Enjoy our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast with Steve Dorff. Mayor Thomas, where's he at? Bishop's mayor now. Hello, Roy. I missed you by a day in Galveston. Three young men are dead there. I didn't kill no one. Get your facts straight, friend. Let's go. Not today. I ain't asking. I said not today. I've just been given news that my brother was murdered. I'm going to give you one day in honor of your brother. Don't play games with me. Get out of town. They're going to string you up for killing the man's brother. We got to get the hell out of here. You want to join? Win, walk out of here alive. Lose, it's your judgment day. Show them. Are we ready for this dead man's hand? It's coming out Friday, and we are so excited that we have Steve Dorr with us. How are you? I'm great. It's great to see you, Kelly. I'm looking at this thinking, I mean, the Western is making such a comeback, and this one is like an exclamation mark on it. Yeah, no, it's... uh... It's really a cool movie, and and uh, it's kind of kind of reminded me of an old Sam Peckinpah uh, film, you know, where especially with the use of the music, using yeah. songs and score. So it was a really fun project for me to it's, do. You know, it's so good to see you. Happy to have you in the well, studio, thanks. songwriter, Hall of Famer, class of twenty eighteen. You've been involved in TV and movies and so many things. And then you come to Nashville and you're like, I'm leaving L.A. behind. I'm, I'm coming to Nashville. I'm going to do some more songwriting. L.A. followed you to Nashville. <laughs> you can't escape this, right? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I thought um, that part of my career, the, the television especially, not being there, it's, it's, L.A. is a very out of sight, out of mind Right, kind of place, and and um, and so I thought, yeah, I'll, you know, maybe I'll do an occasional movie if they remember me, and uh, and then the phone started ringing, and uh, I'm doing, I, I think I'm doing, th- I've got four four movies that two coming out and two that I'm right in the middle of writing now, so it's uh, it's been it's been great. You did three songs for this. The three songs for Dead yeah. Man's Hand and, and 62 minutes of, of orchestral score. It's a, it's a big, it was a wow. big project. Mm-hmm. How fun is it to get to be a part of a project with your son, Stephen, when you see him Well, this is the first acting. time. Is it really? First one, yeah. Oh, I yeah. had just assumed you guys had worked together in the past no, like this. No, no, we've... I th- I think intentionally tried to keep that separate, you know, because okay. we have the same name. I yeah. go by Steve, he's Stephen, and... and um, but yeah, this one came about and uh, and had nothing to do really with him being in it. I got a call from uh, a producer that uh, I had worked with years ago, and uh, uh, he said, uh, "I've got we've got this movie. We're in a tight deadline. We know we can't afford you, but uh, would you be interested in doing it? Your son's in the movie." I, I said, "What movie?" <laughs> and uh, and they told me, and I said, "Well." Let me see it. Let me read yeah. the script, and and they did. And uh, the director uh, Brian Skiba is just fantastic. I mean, he's a young guy. Uh, this is his first big movie for Lionsgate. He's got a four picture deal, and, oh, nice. and so I I said, well, maybe if I do a good job on this one, I'll get to do the others. And uh, so that's what's happening. So. Incredible. So I'm curious, the process of writing a score. They sent you a rough cut, kind of, so you can... No, they sent me, the, they, they me the lock picture. So it is finished. Okay. And I put it... But it's got no It's got no effects. It's got no uh, no sound effects. Uh, 
It's uh, naked, essentially, right? Yeah, the yeah. Bu- the bullets are like squibs. You yeah, know, you don't hear the the uh, and um, and I just put it into my rig, my Pro Tools, and and I watch the scenes and I break them down and spot where music should go, and uh, along with the director's uh, direction, music because he's a musical guy. Mm-hmm. So he said, I really want to use a song here, and I go. Really? I, I said, my instinct would be to score it, you know, underscore it. Mm-hmm. And he said, no, I want to, you know, I want a song to play to play against what's happening visually. And I said, okay. And, uh, and so Michael J. and I, uh, for a good friend of mine from L.A., we wrote uh, two of the songs that, that are kind of, I call it scores. It's score and source music that work and then um and then Jeffrey Steele and Lewis Bryce and I were getting together to just write a song and uh we were all talking about what we might could write and I said look I'm I'm doing this movie they haven't asked me to write a main title song but maybe if we write one um I'll play for the director, and hopefully they'll use it. And so uh, we we had no good idea that day. And and so Jeffrey, of course, starts doing his guitar thing, and I'm playing piano, and and Lewis is singing. Lewis just kills it. And and we wrote this little song in about 40 minutes called Dead Man's Hand. I I go, well, who's going to cut a song called Dead Man's Hand, you know? (laughs) And but we wrote it specifically for the movie, mm-hmm. and Lewis ended up uh, doing the demo, and uh, and when I played for the director, he said, "Who's that singing?" I said, "Well, it's one of the writers, Lewis Bryce," and he said, "We're done. Just just uh, master up the the demo, and uh, and so it bookends the film, plays over the main titles, and plays over the end credits." When you are watching a film, I, I mean, I just want to get into your mind of what's happening at that moment, because obviously you hear the music or you're, you're hearing where it needs to go. I, Is sense, that... I sense it. Okay. It's just been, a, it's just it's been a feel? something I've done my whole life since, you know, yeah. underscoring everything I've ever done in my life as a kid. I mean, when I... When I used to go to a little league game, someone would hit a home run, and I'd I'd ask my mother, "How did you hear that?" And she'd look at me like I was nuts because I'd be orchestrating the whole thing, him trotting around the bases. Uh, other people would be cheering. I'd be musicalizing it. So, oh, that see, and that's so fascinating because for you, that is so natural, and for everyone else, it seems yeah, so it's just writing fantastical. Music, yeah, writing music for for underscoring visual. Is, is is natural to me as breathing. So you'll love this, Steve. As a little kid, I would do the same thing, but I would be doing the play by play for the for the little kid hitting there the home go. run around yeah. the base. Yeah, yeah that's why. Yeah. So, so do you like going to the theater and seeing the finished product with an audience to no. see the reaction? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Of course, they don't play the music loud enough. Right. Well, because the, <laughs> because the, in, in the case of this. Uh, this movie, you know, the horses' hooves and yeah. and uh, and the bullets uh, take precedence mm-hmm. over the music. Right. But a great dub, as they call it, or a mix, is when you get that right balance and and you and you feel the music more than you hear it. Mm-hmm. Because in a movie, you should you should the music should be subliminal and and should make you feel either the the drama or the romance or the action. So yeah. that's so interesting that you say that. I, I would love to hear the correlation of when you obviously you obviously know the chords and where to start something if you want drama to build. You obviously know what that chord progression would sound like or how you would want to build it. How different is it when you're going in just to write a song? Oh, it's totally different. Okay. It's a it's a whole nother process. It's a whole nother muscle. For me, yeah. Yeah. yeah, when I'm looking at a scene, like there's a scene with Cole Hauser, who's, of course... From Yellowstone, yes. From Yellowstone. <laughs> yeah. And Stephen Stephen uh, plays the bad guy, and, and uh, there's this great scene, and I'm watching it, and I just, I'm hearing what it should be before my hands hit the keys. And, and so, and then it's just a matter of, okay, how do I get into it? 
feather into it and how do I feather out of it so you don't you don't miss it when it's gone the music or or it's not too abrupt when it starts it's got to sneak in under dialogue and it can't get in the way of the dialogue because then you're fighting it right so it's it, it it's definitely a process I've been doing it for so long now you know I've done 26 movies and 5,000 hours of network television. So I, I think I know how to do it now. You, know? you got it down. Yeah. Well, how fun is it, though, to also be in this town? You mentioned Jeffrey Steele. You mentioned mm-hmm. Lewis Price. Mm-hmm. You're surrounded by some of the most fun people that are creative mm-hmm. and in songwriting, some of the mm-hmm. best. Mm-hmm. How much fun has it been for you to be rooted here now that you've moved here and have those people at your disposal living right down the road? Oh, and- it's, uh, I talk about it all the time. People ask me, you know what? I mean, this is a real community. Yeah. Uh, Los Angeles isn't anymore. The music com- community has become so fragmented. Um, it takes so long to get anywhere Mm -hmm. you know to drive nine miles can take two and a half hours so um and that's been and everybody you know it's just different and and whereas nashville is still there's still that rock solid sense of music community and and fortunately i've been coming here for so many years i have so many great songwriter friends that i work with and new people that i'm that i'm working with that that I've met since I've been here. So it's been great. Off the air, we were talking about a lot of projects that are coming down the pipe. So a little bit later on this year, why don't you come back and see us when we can talk more about those things? Would you do that? Of course. We would love to have you back in here. I love chatting with you and I'll see you in the neighborhood really soon. We live around the corner from each other. It's a good neighborhood to live in, by the way. We got a lot of friends that are over there. So if you're looking for a place, come on. Charlie's not not sold. We could carpool. (laughs) (laughs) We We are so excited about this film. Thank you so much for coming in and hanging out with us. Thanks for having me. We're going to play the song right now. This is Lewis Bryce singing Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. this is dead man's hand out in theaters on friday everybody check it out you're hearing it on wsm Thanks for listening to the Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And please leave us a five-star review. This podcast was produced through the facilities of WSM Radio in Nashville, Tennessee. The hosts of Coffee, Country, and Cody are Bill Cody, Charlie Matos, and Kelly Sutton. Producer, Eric Markham. WSM General Manager and Director of Content and Programming, J. Patrick Tittle. Copyright 2023. Opry Entertainment Group Holdings, LLC.